And here we go. We are live, and I'm late. <laughs> I can't believe Lambros. I, I do apologize. As I was just saying, I, I was just talking to my partner and um, and having a coffee, drink, making a coffee, and I was like, oh my God, it's 11 o'clock. Uh -huh. so I just so put I'm it down to. So technically, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lambros, Iowana. Um, First of all, thank you for for joining us today. I really appreciate it, especially because it is a little bit of over. It's it's they called it Twix, right? In between Christmas and New Year, the Twix week. So um, mm -hmm. I know for a lot of people it's a holiday, but I just thought it'd be really nice to be able to come on here with someone like yourself. And yeah, uh, you know, I suppose yeah, let's talk about what it's like between holiday and New Year and New Year's resolutions and and uh, all that kind of stuff. But also maybe can you just first of all, introduce yourself uh, to the community. Yeah, first of all, thanks for the invite, Nick. Uh, it's been a pleasure to meet you and uh, uh, collaborate with you. Um, yeah, I'm Lambros Ayano. I'm a holistic uh, master coach or um, a high performance business coach. I do both. Um, I have been doing coaching for the last 12 years. Uh, last 10 years my own business i'm also a clinical hypnotherapist and and um and a keynote speaker um that's one of the few things i i do <laughs> um and yeah and mainly my, I, I love i really love like uh, guiding people to to live a, a life they love as much as possible um and uh, i'm really grateful i'm able to be to do that in the last 10 years um, with some great results, and I'm uh, I'm looking really forward to share some some insights uh, here today with you. Yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm looking forward to that too. I I'm you know I just I love what you do. I, I like I want to know more about it. But Lambros, I'm always really interested about how does a guy like you who who you know is ever into ever working in corporate environments and personal one to one and community building. Um, how do you end up like finding that purpose? Um, like where did it all start from? Like from the beginning to, you know, maybe growing up and, and, and finding your feet with career to eventually end up where you are today and, and, and walking in the steps that you do. Well, I guess it's, uh, it all starts with, um, with your own, with your own kind of uh, self-discovery and search to get to know yourself and uh, and see um, what suits you, what not, what's your what's your strong points and and what you need to improve and all of that. Although I'm a big believer of improving your strong points instead of your your um, your neg negative or let's not say negative. Let's just that's true. Um, just like the other things that you're not so good at. Let's say. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it started with that. Started with uh, getting to know myself. Always wanted to 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 grow and um, know more about me and what's my skills. And I eventually found out I'm good with people. I'm, I'm grateful I found that a little bit early. Although I had a bit of struggles during my studies because it was a big issue to choose what kind of path you want to take. I was very fortunate. One well, one of the few actually from our from my generation at least I'm forty now um, that actually ma really managed to to choose something they love because I started with marketing and then I went into HR which is more like people centric um, helping uh, and managing people and all of that so that's where it all started um, basically from knowing fr knowing me and knowing what's my strong points choosing the, that path and then eventually um, following that traditional path of university, getting into a job, then always wanting to get a promotion and all of that, and then getting into that corporate environment, which was, in at least in, in Cyprus, it was a little bit, um, where in some things were a bit backdated or a bit, um, you know, not so people-centric, let's say. So it was, um, bigger challenge, um, sometimes toxic environments and all of that. So I started not, although I was doing something I loved, I started feeling I was in a, I was in a jail, if you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Mm -hmm. So that's what got me going into start searching for more. What's, 
searching out there what's what's um is there anything more is there anything else i can do and all of that so that's kind of how i dropped into the um personal development path or the coaching path let's say because i was always into personal development but i never really knew this was a thing you know like 10 20 20 years ago it was a thing um but not many people knew about it um and that that's what when i got introduced into this world and and yeah uh, basically i realized that i need to it's more important for my health and my happiness and eventually my success as well for me to be happy in my daily life instead of uh just being in a in a nice job and get a lot of money if you know what i mean so i'll leave it to here because i kind of like talk too much and i'll let you kind of uh, no, I, guide your questions <laughs> no I, I i like to hear a lot because it helps me kind of kind of delve, delve into um into the flow and i i'm always really interested with regards to personal development as being something that I require on a daily basis. I know as a, you know, I'm over 10 years older than you. I'm almost 52. And I, I've realized that my development is continual. I'm never going to be in a static state of bliss. This is it. I've achieved it. But I also have gone through that path of the pressures or the, of cultural ideologies of what it is, what it looks like to be successful, which was for me in the early nineties, you know, having to have a nice car and really nice suits and, you know, a, a pretty girlfriend and nice watches and, and all those things, That's, which is what I thought the world needed to see from me as being on Nick's Made It. And in this development or transformation or change, I've realized that, you know, the exteriors really never match the interior. And if my interior is feeling less than or self-pity or self-centeredness or fear-based, then there's no exterior that's going to make me feel right. And I try, like you, I try to help people kind of find that inner self so that we can find truth about who we are and, and why we're here and find purpose. And it's, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm not confused, but I'm, I just wish the world, more people would wake up to the fact that this isn't it. And that there's just so much more out there than the job and the this and the that, the, you know, like those exteriors to to finding bliss and, and happiness in life. Um, so how do you like, obviously, people come to you as, as potential clients, but do you think on a more of a holistic thing of like, how is the world going to become a better place? And how are we going to get out of all the political and economic and energy problems that we all have is, you know, is by people developing and transforming. So um, I know that's kind of, a, it's not really a question. It's more of a, like a philosophical thing of like, do you think the world is waking up to the fact that this isn't it? The job isn't the development. The job is where we need to be developed and to find a, a, a purpose in self and truth within ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think definitely people are waking up and um, and they're realizing there's something more. Um, this has been, uh, when I started, Obviously, it was much, much less people, but because I'm involved in volunteering as well, I see what I talk with a lot of people, I see what's going on in the world. I feel now um, I can't really, um, you can't really pinpoint a number, but I, I, we could say, um, we could say it might have been like a five, 10% to people back 10, 20 years ago. But now I think it's a lot more. Maybe now we're at to 20 or 30 or even more. Um, the challenge is the challenge is, is not really well. The first step is always realization, like acknowledgement that there is something more. But the real challenge is actually doing it. So um, I think that's where we need to kind of focus on because I think it's also the solution. Because if more people do it, more people will get inspired to take their example and do it themselves. What I find is a lot of the times, even if people want to do it or if, if they really believe in it, we're kind of like, um, we've grow, grown up in a society where we need to kind of see proof or have science backing something. So 
it's I think the best impact we can have is like give the example to other people through our lives or through other people that we're helping so they get inspired and say oh if they did it I can do it as well mm. oh, I, I love yeah no yeah. I love that I, I love that the, if, if he can do it if she can do it if they can do it I can do it as well and I think that that is one of the crucial elements as you said like People, there's, if you can go to any bookstore or library and the self-help, self-development section is the fastest growing and one of the biggest sections of a library now. It's all about personal growth and self-development. And I think it's very daunting that people can sit there and they can look at all of these books to read that can give them guidance or protocols for transformation. But it's this, the one thing you can't give anybody is that willingness, mm -hmm. you know, that little bit of curiosity to say, hey, do you know what? I feel like my life isn't, as abundant or joyous as it can be, but maybe I'm just going to kind of eke my way through it because this is what it's all about. And I think they need to hear people like yourself and the stories and the, and the testimonials of people who've gone, no, like doing a little bit of digging, a little bit of shadow work, you know, a little bit of inventory, a little bit of truth finding. Mm -hmm. it, it takes willingness to do it. It's like you, like you say, you got to stand up. You got to, you got to step up to the plate and say, I'm willing to play the game. I'm willing to, to do this. That, you know, I suppose it's the one thing that guys like you, if you could bottle it, you'd give it away. Wouldn't you? You'd give a little bottle of that willingness away to people be like, yeah, let me go. Let me have a, have a try at it. You know? So what, what are some of those stories where someone's like, ah, oh, you know, Lambros, I'm thinking about this, but I need a little bit of convincing or, or what do you say? Do you just say, kind of give it a go? Have a little bit of a have a kind of a trial or a little have a little bit of space with me and see what happens and and then when do you see the light go on in their eyes where they're like I want more of this? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah, definitely. It's always having a goal, um, but I'm more of a I like I have a kind of a, a more balanced approach. A lot of a lot of people in the industry um, are all about action, and I love action. I love about like getting starting to do something even if it's small it's always a, a good start but uh, what I always say you also need to have the right foundations and then mm. that's why well because I like football you can also say like going back to basics so are you doing the basics do you have the basics the basic philosophy or the basic ideas that will get you through whatever you need to go through so that's why I love the, the holistic approach, which is mind, body, and soul, because mm -hmm. you need to take care of, of all three if you need to if you need to grow. Obviously, there should be a focal point, a point where you, you will say, okay, I will focus on the mind now, or I will focus on the soul, or whatever it's needed according to the person. But you should always have in mind um, that, yeah, we should i should also look at the other the other two because they are, as human beings what defines us is we are these three things we are we are uh, mind body and soul so it's you cannot grow if you ignore any of that you mm. need to keep practicing you need to um pay attention to it you need to understand the basics of it so in, in order for you to 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 really grow Obviously, you are gonna grow, but if you wanna if you wanna grow consistently, and or if you wanna grow in the best possible way, let's say, then I think this approach and this is catching on. I've been doing this for years, but what I see now, it's really catching on, and people are, yeah. and a lot of colleagues are realizing that oh, it's not enough to just work on the mind. I need to to work on the on all of this stuff. I, I I agree completely, and I actually have mind, body, soul, and the wholeness of one tatt tattooed on me. So um, I, I I get it, and it's something that you know for me it's very easy. And what I've actually learned is the wholeness of one is that it is all one and interconnected. And um, I I I can see how people who who would be listening and seeing this would be like, okay, body really easy, eat right, exercise good sleep, hydration, makes sense. Mind, okay, do, sorry. Yeah. Just to, to remind you, you forgot, um, you, well, one of the most basic things, breathing. Breathing, <laughs> breathing, the body. breath for more than yep. a minute or two. 
Um, but also breath is so connected with soul. And mind. <laughs> the breath is connected. But yes, so the physical aspect of the body, you can really, you can say to somebody, you know, that it's, it's very easy. There's thousands of gyms everywhere. It really kind of concentrates on the physical. The mind, you know, again, uh, with the awareness of so many mind diseases out there present today, look after your brain. But the one thing that I, I feel a lot of people always get stuck with is the soul, you know, and you try to talk about the universe, guiding spirits, you know, the more religious would call God. Um, but this kind of spiritual connection to one another and the universe that we have, that seems to be the sticking point with most people, especially in the corporate environment, I'm sure you find. How do you work through it? How does your language help it become more acceptable and reduce prejudice, reduce people's prejudgment towards soul? Because I think we've been so indoctrinated with religion and, and, and religion, I mean, in the context of like the church, um, that people are very standoffish towards that. So like, as you say, if we need all three elements to become one and one is really stuck because of cultural ideologies, how do you work that work through that with people? Yeah, well, it's a pretty good question, actually. And it's, it's a very common thing, especially in the corporate environment. Um, so the, the first and one thing that that it's it's fundamental is have no judgment and be able to accept whatever um, someone believes. Uh, so when I talk to when I talk to big crowds or, or when I go into a corporate environment, when I'm gonna mention the word uh, God. I'm gonna say God or um, uh, something bigger than you or the universe or whatever you believe in. So it's it's not um, uh, uh, for the, and I always make these additional comments, like even if you don't believe there's something greater than you, like you should have some kind of belief, like at least belief in yourself or in human beings. Yeah. So first of all is the acceptance. So you, you accept uh, each person, with whatever they believe. I think this is also um, the definition of spirituality in comparing to religion. Religion actually tells you what's the truth and this, this is it and then that's it. There is no really uh, room for maneuver or changing things or whatever. And then spirituality is like, you can believe whatever you want, go find your own truth. And that, that truth can include that there is no God. If that, if that suits you, what I always say, if you believe that belief actually helps in your life, then by all means do it. But yeah. the thing is, is like what I find is when most people start questioning it and go deeper about that. And that's that's one of the things is like, does that believe that there's, no, there's nothing greater than out there? Does it really help you? If you really start questioning it and go deeper and deeper, you'll find that actually it's not really helping you yeah. because that idea of something greater than you, it's always giving you, even if you don't have belief about something, it will give you hope. It will give you hope that, okay, there's something greater than me. Maybe if nothing else works, at least I still have hope that someone or something can actually help me out. So this is the one thing that actually it's it's very important to to actually be accepting accepting uh, to whatever uh, someone believes. But the second and most important thing is to connect some basic things we practice in our lives, connect it with um, spirituality, and also connect it with science. So, for example, oh. the biggest example we can give. And it's very simple, but it's very fundamental in, in our lives and also in spirituality is um, gratefulness. So it's like being grateful, uh, if in whatever way you take it, it actually helps human beings to move forward, to grow, to feel better, to feel happier, to, to actually give them strength to actually go and achieve new things and all of that. But what I always do is I connect the I connect the how gratefulness works in our body with science, which is basically there's actually so many studies that prove that when you're grateful, there's no other feeling feeling that can exist, especially a negative one, because you're already in, in such a, in that feeling of gratefulness, which is a high vibration, that nothing else can actually exist. No fear, no anxiety, no nothing. Um, and then you go into other studies where there is, where is 
people with depression and all they did was great, practice gratefulness for a month and then they stopped taking the antidepressants or like see the studies that were actually, when you do gratefulness, those, um, um, those feelings and, and that, that mood you get in produces all those hormones that actually make your, um, make your uh, body work better. Uh, Nick, just give me a sec. Sorry, there was some noise. I need to take care of that. So yeah, no uh, uh, so yeah. I mean, these things like connect something very basic, which I think gratefulness is the the most important thing to actually nurture our soul because you can't really train the soul. It's the only thing that's not trainable. You can train the body, you can train the mind, but you really cannot train the soul. But how you can nurture your soul is find ways to be grateful. And then connect that gratefulness and the effect that it has with some science. I always find that it works a lot in the corporate um, section where people are more, um, let's say they're more, I won't really say necessarily more educated, but they're people who are questioning things. They want to see proof of things. They want to, um, they will go and research things. So connecting that, uh, the gratefulness with science actually always does the trick. It, yeah. uh, it actually binds the two together and, and it kind of, it's, I kind of find it that is the bridge between um, spirituality and science because mm. we do have all these things, all these studies that kind of are all the results from people that actually proves that, oh, actually this works and this is how it works. I, I love what you're saying and how you explain it. It's very simple to me that I can see that you know, from, from my realization, my awareness and acceptance comes around the fact that um, I'm not the center of the universe. You know, it isn't all about me. I don't have to be holding on to all of these things where I'm, I'm in fear, I'm in resentment. Um, I'm, I'm not in gratitude, as you're talking about, which is so, you know, where you can let go and you can actually just hold a moment to be grateful for your breath for your relationships, you know, for even a raining day where the water is nurturing all the, the plants and the earth and you can go, wow, this is just a beautiful thing. And I'm not in control of any of it. And just to be curious to, to be that, you know, like we, we think of science as, as the proof beyond proof that because these are things that we can prove then it is the ultimate truth. But I'm just so curious to the fact that we only know a little bit you know, and all, all you need to do is watch the documentaries on Netflix or listen to Professor Brian Cox and just to realize that science has brought us so far with these little little noggins of ours, but there's just so much more. And as you say, science proves that there's only so many things that we can see. You know, there are, like, for instance, with regards to the spectrum of colors our eyeballs can see. You know, there are animals on this planet that can see a far greater spectrum of colors and shapes and heat and that we we're, we can't see. And now our science is being able to go, hey, hold on a second. We can only see a little bit. So let's just be curious to the fact that there might be a higher purpose for all of us and that we don't have to live on this planet, over 8 billion of us now, in fear of not getting what we want or losing what we've got. Why can't we just live in gratitude and love? And I love what you say, when gratitude and love are in space, in the space, then fear can't live there, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that we live in a world that just always wants us to be in fear and be divided. Um, and again, it's just being curious to go, I'm not going to fall foul to that. I'm going to take a, uh, I, want, I, I say a higher purpose, but a different purpose. You know, one of just being curious, doing a bit of research where you can go into the corporate environment. And again, I like what you say, that these people are kind of data-driven and results-driven and they want to see what they're the bang for their buck. And if you're going to come in and do a class where we're going to be meditating, I'm like, you know, you got to, you got to really give them the benefits of what meditating is, which is, yeah. you know, and, and for a lot of people, it's, it's a uh, sub subjective, right? Is it subjective or objective? Objective. And they want to be objective where sub, you know, meditation can be subjective. So, which brings me into the fact that I know you talk about hypnotherapy, right? 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so can you, can you give me, I'm very curious because um, I worked with a guy named Ed Percival over 20 years ago and he studied under Stephen Covey. Oh. So, so uh, um, and he uh, hypnotized me uh, in a way where I thought, I thought he was going to make me like fuck like a chicken, you know, that kind of hypnosis where <laughs> Because that's that's Lambros. That's what I thought hypnosis was. So, can you enlighten me a little bit more and enlighten the audience about what you do with regards to that word hypnotherapy and, and what it means to you and and how how do you practice that and how do you teach that? Yeah, um, big subject. I'll try to summarize it. Um, so, first of all, what you mentioned about um, the chicken is a really good example of differentiating and understanding the difference between a hypnotist and a hypnotherapist. A hypnotist is a showman. He uses, he uses um, uh, hypnotism to actually have a show to entertain people. Uh, a hypnotherapist uh, is trained and should, be, um, should have a certain level of training at least um, to be able to do therapy um, through using hypnotherapy. Now, what is hypnotherapy? In simple words, it's basically uh, mind exercises. There is, it's a scientific way to train our mind so we can communicate with our subconscious and make it work into synchronization with our conscious mind so we can change habits, do the things we want or release any any negative or things that are not really serving us. And what it does really is just it, 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 in a scientific way, again, which is very similar to meditation, meditation and hypnotherapy are very, they're pretty much the same thing. It's just meditation, it's, it, it comes more from a spiritual aspect and a more simplistic way. And then um, hypnotherapy comes from a more scientific uh, background of how the, the brain works and how does it respond to different um, uh, different things that you you might actually put in front of it. So, what it what it really is basically it's it's relaxing your body and mind. So it actually slows down the brain the brain waves, in and and allows you to tap into the subconscious and give instructions in a certain way. Again, in a certain and very specific way to actually put things in your mind that you want to or um, change things or beliefs or memories uh, that are not really serving you. Mm. Uh, so in, in a nutshell, that's what it is. Um, to be honest, through my, through, my, uh, through my experience, I do not practice it that much because um, I mean, practice it as it's known, which is basically you go into hypnotherapist, you say, oh, okay, I have this issue. Okay, let's work on it. And basically you have a discussion with the, with the uh, client and then you agree what you're gonna work on. And then you, since you've agreed, you do the hypnotherapy and you do some sessions to do therapy and help you out. Mm -hmm. I'm not really into the, the therapy thing because I'm mostly doing coaching, coaching, um, in a, in a, in a, in a big way, it's more focused on, on the future and on, on, um, on building new things. It's not really lingering on the past and all of that. Um, that has some, something to do with it. So I'm not going into that therapy part, which hypnotherapy is amazing for a lot of things, a, mm -hmm. a lot of things that other, other areas cannot really solve hypnotherapy on, or NLP in your linguistic programming can actually solve problems very, very much faster and more effectively. Um, but the way I use it and what I found it's, it's more, um, much more effective is, first of all, you, you start using it through the language. The language, the NLP and hypnotherapy language some magic words as we say them or um, or uh, phrases or the way you speak actually still work while you're conscious. So that's the first way I use it. Through, through discussion, I use some, some ways that actually help you to more and more to understand um, some things and, and get it really, uh, really deep down in, 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 your, in your mind. 
Um, the other thing is, but, but what I prefer doing, which is much more effective, is I teach people how to actually train their mind through their daily uh, self-talk, through their daily um, lives, just by being conscious of what do you think and how you change it, and then how do you talk to other people? I find that that is, it's, it takes longer. However, it's much more impactful. It gives the power to the person. So you don't need a hypnotherapist or a coach to actually go, you go into a session and you need to do an exercise to train your mind. You, you, you learn the way how to do it in your daily life through being conscious of the way you speak and, and, and the way you think and changing that over time. And then also it has a more long-term effect because you do, the person does it on its own. So it gives them confidence and, and self-worth. And it, it's, it takes, obviously it will take more practice, but the, the effects are more long-term. So it's not just a habit that you build, it's, um, it becomes second nature and you do it without even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Obviously you're gonna insert some other techniques as well, like how to build habits and all of that, but eventually you wanna get, and that's what I love when doing coaching is not just, ah, oh, you go to, and you have a problem and you solve it and then that's it. Or you learn something, that a skill you need and for a specific thing and then you let it go. If you wanna do proper work as a coach or as a, healer or whatever you want to name it it should have long-term effects if you're going to treat the symptom we've seen how how uh western medical science a lot of the times treats the symptom but it doesn't solve the the, the cause and then the problem keeps coming and coming and coming again the, the issue is to actually uh treat the cause not the symptom Mm -hmm. And the way we do that is by building new habits that eventually become second nature and that eventually you wake up and you go into a challenging situation, someone is shouting to you or you think something very like a nightmare scenario and you don't even have to think of what you're going to do. Your mind just rolls up and just does what it's supposed to do, which is basically change the story or uh, stay calm to this aggressive person and try to speak and communicate with them and understand them why are they feeling like that and how can i help them so in in a nutshell that's um that's the way i prefer to to work on it so no, daily. It, daily and i think it's something that people need to be aware of is that it's something that we can really say easy is that i want to retrain i want to unlearn some instinctual habits that I have developed over the years of like snapping at someone who annoys me, right? Very simple. I, I have a quick temper, a quick fuse, and I'll say something um, off the cuff as a react, I react very fast. And then saying, okay, I need to change that. It's the same thing of saying, oh, right now I, I can only do five push ups. I want to be able to do 100 push ups. I know in just thinking I've got to change from five push-ups to 100 push It's going to take me probably six months of going to the gym every day and doing push-ups and, and bench press and working my – and I think it's the same thing with regards to, as you're saying, the unlearning of these, these things, these, these whatever, whatever they come from, trauma or whatever, our reaction to something where I'm like, this no longer serves me. It makes me anxious. It makes me – I don't want to do it anymore. I want to change. And just saying I want to change is a great step. But it is a practice of unlearning and then relearning these new techniques. And I, I imagine what you want to, to, to tell people is to be gentle and be kind on yourself and that this is a process, is it not? Oh, for sure. I think uh, you just touched on, on the very thing that I, in, in personal development, I think it's the most important thing. What I find from my experience is that from doing thousands of, of hours of coaching and seminars and all of that, the biggest challenge for people is self-sabotage. And self-sabotage comes from just what you just described, the disappointment of not having the result you want, either through the specific time that you have in your head or through the specific way you had in your head. Yeah. So that's the biggest challenge is people, it's easy to get someone excited and inspired to start doing stuff, 
the, the challenge is to keep them going. And that's where coaching comes. And that's why it's so powerful. So you have someone keeping you accountable and giving you ways to keep you uh, inspired and keep you going um, instead of doing it alone. So most people, I would say more than 50%, what they will do is like they start and then they stop because they get disappointed uh, from having too, too high expectations, not taking it step by step. So I want a million uh, euros. And then um, if I don't have it within a year or uh, within two years or within six months, then it's a, it's a failure or you get disappointed. And you, you kind of forget the most basic thing, which is step by step, which is yeah. you're going to make it in small steps. You didn't learn English or maths or whatever from the first year of, of school. It took time to actually learn the basics and, and, and do them or getting disappointed because it's not really happening your way and it's happening in another way. And then you are actually growing, but you, you're disappointed because you expected it to work in a different way. But the funny, the funny thing I find in a lot of times, people don't realize that actually it is working for you. It's just not working the way you want it to work, but it is working. What is the, what's the goal here? Is it to actually achieve what you always wanted or is it actually the procedure? The procedure has nothing. If I told you now, I'll give you 1 million euros, you'll say, no, I won't take it just because it's not the way I was thinking the, the the way I was thinking it would happen. Yeah. Um, so this these controversies, these this kind of like traps that we fall into, yeah, I think it's the biggest thing. And I, yeah. I, I'm a firm believer that if you actually, even if you do nothing else in personal growth and you just work on avoid getting disappointed. And then when you do get disappointed, you change it or you see the bigger picture or you um obviously the, the 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 desired effect is always to change something that's not serving you but there's many ways to do that either go back to the basics or give it a new <coughs> meaning a perspective let's say um there's so many ways and um this comes to also something you mentioned and i wanted to say is like there is a saying um, i don't remember who said it but it was saying like uh, the the literate of the 21st century is not the 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 people who have no education is those is those who cannot unlearn what they have learned yeah but what technically that's correct what i would change in that is like the secret is change not really unlearning is is change because our learning kind of kind of implies that i'm going to fight something that is not really working anymore and then i'm gonna learn something new but just to be clear anyway, it can have one word can have so many different meanings for people. But just to clarify that, what, what's the, the best way to actually uh, grow is always change, but change oh, uh, to focus on the new one, not fighting the old, just focus on creating something new or focus on the solution instead of the instead of the problem. And this knowledge has been with us from, from <laughs> like Socrates said it like 2000 BC said like, the secret of change is to um, not to fight the old, but to focus on building the new. Right. And the secret is always changing, change. It doesn't matter if you're depressed. It doesn't matter if you have the negative thoughts. It doesn't matter if you get disappointed. What matters is what you do at that specific moment. And the, the, the solution is always change it, change the story, change your approach, change what actions are you taking. So it's always like changing and focusing on the new. A lot of the times we see also from society that um, we try to, to solve problems by fighting um, the old war on terror, war on drugs, war, war, war. It's not the solution. It's just you're yeah. focusing on the problem, not the solution. I really like that because that is what I've been doing. I've been trying to say with regards to something simple, unlearn old ideas around masculinity. So unlearn some of the things that my dad taught me, my coaches taught me, my teachers taught me, which is that just for instance, real men don't cry. 
So yeah. this is that's something that was a it's a it's the patriarchy. It's misogynistic. It's something that I learned. So what I like to try to say to myself is, Nick, I need to unlearn it. But I love how you've explained it is maybe I just need to acknowledge that it didn't serve me then and it doesn't serve me now. I don't need to fight it. I don't need to unlearn it because I already recognize the fact that it was harmful teachings and that it wasn't their fault for them teaching me those things. It was what they knew. And mm -hmm. it's really easy to go that they learned from their fathers. They were coming out of a world war. You know, they had all these church wellian ideologies of fight them on the beaches and don't show emotion. And, and, and it was like the do or die, live or death, life, life or death kind of attitude that was instilled in sport culture and something that was instilled in me. And I'm really going to take that forward, Lambros, because I've really been trying to say, unlearn it. Let's get rid of it. It didn't serve us. They're old ideas. You know, and 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 uh, and let's cast them aside and un unlearn them, rather than just maybe recognizing it and acknowledging it and almost honoring it and saying, "You did what you were meant to do." It no longer serves me, and that's change. So I really, really appreciate that. That's really helped me change a perspective of something that I've almost felt righteous about. Mm. Let's change this. Let's change these old ideas around masculinity. Or sorry. Let's fight these old ideas around masculinity rather than evolve and transform and look to the future and look to the sacred feminine as a way of getting out of it rather than because I don't I think the feminine, the sacred feminine wouldn't fight it, it would just honor it. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. It's so thank you for that. Thing. It's the same thing. I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to share. Um, it's the same thing when you when you have an arguing with someone and um, let's say about this subject. If you go about and you say, let's, um, he says he's very uh, for patriarchy and all of that stuff. If you start arguing in a, in a fighting way, what's gonna happen? Even if you're right, probably it's gonna end up bad or it's gonna end up by yeah. both of you not agreeing because we know that even if you're right, when you fight, you get angry and then uh, you, you might be right, but you lose your your right because you there is this disagreement and all of that. Whereas if you if you sit and listen their perspective and really listen though without judging, without interrupting, without just say, okay, tell me why do you think that patriarchy is um, is so helpful in society and all of that, and really listen, and then say okay, this is my view, and say it in a very Say it in a way where you don't really care if you, if the other person listens or if the other person would agree with you, just say it. Just, this is my truth. And this is the way I live. I respect yours, but this is the way I live. And then maybe give an example. It will have a totally different effect. Even if someone is very narrow-minded, when they live from there, you will make them think because you've gone about it in such a nice way and you really listen to their aspect as well, it's gonna have some kind of impact. Maybe even, even for the most narrow-minded person, it won't really change the then and there, but it will plant the seed. And then the next time, the next time, eventually it will have some kind of impact. It's the same thing with ourselves. If you fight it, you're gonna get into an argument with yourself yeah. eventually. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, be well said. <laughs> Excuse me. I think I got that cold that you had a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I've been last week. I was laid out just before Christmas. It was horrible. Um, we've run out of time, Lambros. I can't. I can't believe we've already come to the end. And I wanted to kind of give people a a launch into 2023. So I suppose just in a few words, you know, what are your what are you looking forward to uh, into the new year, and and maybe a tip or two for people heading into into. Uh, into 2023? Uh, I'll keep it simple. I, I really like uh, the beginning of the year is always a wonderful opportunity because a lot of people um, will get into New Year's resolutions and all of that. The, what I find from my experience is that a lot of people eventually drop out by the end of January just because they don't know how to go about it or the main reason is what I said before, like not taking it step by step. So. 
what I would what I would say is like um, take it test test uh, step by step, take it easy, find someone who can help you, even if you if you can't afford it right now. There's so many ways that you can uh, find people uh, that are like minded or from YouTube videos that can actually give you some kind of help. Um, and then because what uh, because of what we touched on, I would I would leave you with two very very powerful questions that can actually help you with the with uh, disappointment, but also with um, loving yourself more and appreciating other people as well, which is the first question is always like, if a loved one was in my situation right now, what would I, what would I tell them? What would I advise them? And it's in really challenging times when we screw things up. So apologies for the word. Um, um, a lot of the times we will start blaming ourselves. When you make this question, you, you help your mind to be an observer, to get out of the situation and also use that innate, innate skill that we all have, which is to say something nice to our loved one when they, when they have a challenge. So we'll, most of us know what to say uh, when something doesn't work for, for our friend or our partner and all of that. But when it comes to ourselves, we don't really do it. That question actually helps you to do that. It, it's it's amazing. It, it, it has. I'm, I won't get into it of how it works, but it works in such an amazing way and it, it so many different aspects. And questions are always the the key to train the mind. So a very good question, a strategic question, will always get you to where um, where you want or train your mind. And the last one, and I won't I won't, I won't get into it too much because we're already uh, out of time. Is what would what would love do in this situation? Mm. And this is an amazing question. It's, it just I won't really. It doesn't really need explaining because once you do that question and you get into that love thing, you always have the right answers. Yeah, beautiful, <laughs> Lambros. I, I found out in forty eight minutes you're an absolute wonderful man, and uh, I, I love what you do. I'm really grateful that you are that I've met you and that you could in this brief amount of time, um, I can learn more about you. So hopefully, why don't we, you know, maybe we can get you on again in a few months and try to continue these conversations. It's, I think it'd be wonderful to get you on again when we get, and because it's so 45 minutes just flies by. At the beginning, you think, oh, wow, what are we going to talk about for 45 minutes? All of a sudden you blink and it's gone. <laughs> um, but you've, you've left me with some real gems. I really appreciate it. That's what happens when you have interesting conversation. Time flies like that. Yeah. yeah. I'm, Glad I met you. Um, thank you so much for the invite. I will be glad to join you some other time and keep up what you're doing. It's amazing and I'm sure it's helping a lot of people. Even uh, you might not know, but I'm sure um, there's always people that I'll help from these videos. So thank yeah. you for everything and I'm looking forward to talk again, Nick. Thank you, brother. And I wish you a happy new year and, and I'll just take this moment to everyone at the Elephant and Castle community. Thanks again from Retry for an absolutely wonderful year. And we'll continue to do what we do by building community and getting amazing, inspirational people on here every week for more Retribe lives with the Elephant and Castle community. But from all of us, we wish you a very happy new year. Thanks a lot. And bye for now. Yeah.